Rajiv Manalal Gupta, MD and founder, Workspertise Group, and his topic is Business Excellence and Operations Automation. Thank you. Good afternoon, Namaskar. So, Swagatya Ji, my work has been a little bit better. After lunch, immediately, the first session you took, and you gave everyone a place where the problem is. If you understand something, people started thinking. So, thank you. Appreciate it. This session is generally very difficult. For me, I also have to eat food. So, to say and to think is a little slow. So, pardon me if there are some messages. But firstly, as SMBs, I think आपका अपने काम को छोड़के यहाँ आना और यहाँ दिन भर बिताना is I think deserves a clap. मैं भी एक entrepreneur हूँ और पिछले काफी सालों से ये कंपनी मैंने चलाई है तो मुझे पता है कि अपना काम छोड़के बाहर निकल के दिमाग वहाँ रहता है आधा यहाँ रहता है ट्रांजैक्शन लगे रहते हैं वी आर ऑलवेज ऑन द फोन और समथिंग लाइक दैट बट रियली दिस इज अ टफ जॉब टू बी एंटरप्रेन्योर एनीवेर इन द वर्ल्ड नॉट जस्ट इन इंडिया वी फील दैट वी हैव टफर एनवायरनमेंट बट बिलीव मी आई हैव सीन इंटरनेशनल एंटरप्रेन्योर आल्सो इट इज एस टफ एस इट इज ओवर इयर इन डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स यहाँ पे कुछ और प्रॉब्लम होती है वहाँ पे कुछ और प्रॉब्लम होती है सो the company I represent uh, is called Workspertise Group. We have uh, uh, presence in India, uh, US, and Australia. No. So uh, we have uh, three different units. One unit is which is BPO services. Which was part of Hero Group. Ka. Wo company we acquired. I was the president and CEO. Tha. So six years ago, that company we as a management team acquired. Karke, uh, we went away. Dusra part hai IT solutions and services. Wo, uh, normally, uh, hum custom solutions banate hai for customer interaction management, you know, uh, which complements the BPO business. So, uh, and we partnered with a couple of companies to uh, have platforms also. Aapka, uh, communication technology ho gai, CRM technology ho gai, uh, uh, customer acquisition technology ho gai, wo sara, uh, hum karte hai. Teesra jo hamara ek, uh, platform hai, jo ki uh, aaj baat karne wala hun, is called Saltworks. Namak kaam karta hai. So as salt is necessary for food, salt works is as necessary for your operations, is our belief is. Ye focused hai small and mid-sized businesses pe. If you want to achieve business excellence, your processes have to be strong. Ye mein koi naya gyan nahi rao, koi nai baat nahi bol rao. That is a reality, aap sabko pata hai. I'm sure each of you have dealt with consultants, quality experts, and all of them would have said that if the process is strong, then automatically the output will be better. The costing will be better, the profitability will be better, the cash flow will be better. So, in 2010, we had this concept conceived and started working on it. At that time, there was no GST. Every state had its own tax structures. There was VAT which was there, service tax was there. The whole environment was complex. उस जर्नी के में हमने 4000 स्मॉल एंड मिडसाइज बिजनेसेस से बात करी। नासिक भी आए। वन ऑफ माय इन्वेस्टर इज़ फ्रॉम नासिक, जेंटलमैन कॉल्ड राजीव देशपांडे। सो आई वुड हैव स्पेंड एटलिस्ट थ्री टू फोर मैन मंथ्स इन नासिक टॉकिंग टू डिफरेंट एसएमबीज एंड टेस्टिंग दी फर्स्ट प्रोटोटाइप एट देयर लोकेशंस छोटी से छोटी कंपनी थी एक चार लोगों की कंपनी कॉल्ड उद्योग शर्दा जो कि वायर हार्नेसेस बनाती थी और दे वर सप्लायर्स टू कंपन ग्रीज एंड कपल ऑफ अदर कंपनीज बड़ी कंपनी जो थी हमारी व्हिच वाज मेकिंग इंडस्ट्रियल साइलेंसर्स for Rolls Royce and similar uh, uh, companies and exporting largely. So that was the range which we had uh, tested this product around. So today we are in a very matured state. We have uh, uh, customers which are configurable. I will not challenges ki jada baat nahi karunga, but maybe these are some of the processes which you business ko chalate hai. 
सो अगर आपको अपना बिजनेस बढ़ाना है तो सबसे ज्यादा जरूरी होता है आपका कस्टमर का जो एक्सपीरियंस आपसे डील करने का है दैट हैज टू बी आउटस्टैंडिंग दैट हैज टू बी कंटिन्यूसली इंप्रूविंग आज जो आपका एक्सपीरियंस है एक साल बाद वही एक्सपीरियंस से कस्टमर खुश रहेगा नहीं उसकी रिक्वायरमेंट चेंज हो जाएगी उसको आदत हो जाएगी अब नेक्स्ट क्या करेंगे आप तो ये आपको कॉन्स्टेंटली सोचना पड़ेगा वॉट ड्राइव बिजनेस एक्सीलेंस इज योर प्रोसेस इज अराउंड इट एंड दैट ड्राइव द कस्टमर एक्सपीरियंस इन द बिजनेस एक्सीलेंस और इन द प्रोसेस डेफिनेशन जो जरूरी है आप अपने कस्टमर का एक्सपेक्टेशन कैप्चर करते रहेंगे तभी आप उनका एक्सपीरियंस uh, इंप्रूव कर पाएंगे तो हम इसको बोलते हैं BX एक्स इज इक्वल टू सी एक्स टू कस्टमर एक्सपेक्टेशन एंड एक्सपीरियंस ये दोनों को इन्फ्लुएंस करना चाहिए फ्रॉम योर प्रोसेस एक्सीलेंस टूडे हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू है डिप्लॉइड ऑटोमेशन इन योर ऑपरेशन प्रोसेस और एन ई आर पी आई विच इज ट्रैकिंग योर एंटायर प्रोसेस there are two hands over here in this entire hall and believe me this is a reality how many of you have tested and failed as and decided ki hum to apne excel pe hi kaam karenge ya kagaz pe kaam karenge erp deploy karne ki koshish kar rahi thi automation koi process karne ki koshish kar rahi thi and finally successfully nahi kar paye how many of you i may be asking about your failure but we accept your failure that is the reality jitna hum failure accept karna shuru kar denge usna hamare paas success aayegi so you have failed right mckinsey ki ek study hai unka clear hai first time roll out pe 76% of automation deployment in a business fail फाइनल सक्सेस रेशियो इज 46 परसेंट विच मीन 54 परसेंट डिप्लॉयमेंट फेल होते हैं तो इफ एनी ऑफ यूर फेल डोंट वरी बट फ्रॉम द फेलियर वी टू कीप फाइटिंग बैक एंड उसके रीजन काफी होते हैं सो इफ यू हैव टू ग्रो एंड इफ यू हैव टू रन यू हैव टू वर्क ऑन योर प्रोसेस टूडे वन ऑफ द चैलेंजेस विच वी ऑल फेस इज कंटिन्यूसली चेंजिंग टेक्नोलॉजी we had uh, aws uh, uh, some time back and they have uh, 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 built up a cloud based uh, uh, platform which will automate lot of your uh, uh, requirements possibly you know. now how are they ensuring ki they will continually keep upgrading that technology ek bar aayenge invest kar denge shayad thoda sa they will uh, uh, roll out something and then will they be able to continue to add value every year that is one problem which needs to be sorted jo bhi technology solution lenge aap you need to sort that problem ki ongoing kya kya hoga second is data management mere paas data entry ke liye bande hain wo multitask karte hain wo shayad procurement bhi sambhalta hai mera bomb bhi wohi banata hai बाहर भी कई बार जाना पड़ता है उसको बैंक या किसी कस्टमर के कलेक्ट पेमेंट लेने या कुछ कर फॉलोअप करने या बिल देने माय डेटा एंट्री स्टॉक्स व्हाट इज माय डेटा डेटा मैनेजमेंट प्रोसेस हाउ विल आई मेक श्योर दैट माय डेटा इज एंटर्ड ऑन टाइम दैट इज वन बिग प्रॉब्लम वाई मोस्ट ऑफ दी एस एम टू फेल इन दर डिप्लॉयमेंट ऑफ ऑटोमेशन That was second problem we had identified by talking to these four thousand odd SMBs. Third, when you are rolling out a technology a, a, a transformation, most decisions are taken at the top. It's owner driven. How many of you look at ki kya mera banda chala paega aur chalaega? Usse pucha, will you be able to run it? Usko dikhaya, will you be able to run it? The biggest fear most people have uh, in entering is data. कि मेरे से शायद गलती हो गई, so I will get a blowing. डांट पड़ेगी, शायद penalty भी लग जाएगी. Depending on the uh, business owner, uh, the repercussions can be bad. So they don't want to. आता भी होगा तो बोलेगा मेरे को तो आता नहीं ठीक से. ये तो जम नहीं रहा कुछ. so is there a way you can get away with that fear of entering data now these are some very pertinent issues operational environmental issue isme technology ka koi solution nahi hai isme process chalane ka solution hai how will you run that process 
how will you ensure that data gets in time and to the accuracy which you require now these are the processes largely if uh, which uh, run sorry now how we have configured this in saltworks we have a process where it is con your business will be configured on the saltworks platform we would have somebody at the back end who would take care of your data entry all you have to send is take a document scan it or take an image and email it from an authorized email id it will go into a, a, a ticketing system which will be assigned to you and there will be multiple people at the back end who would take care of this whole process every time we make a change an alert will come to you through an email ki ye change kara hai isko approve karna hai ki nahi karna hai aur aap mai us link ko click karenge it will show you aur jo document bheja hai wo bhi sath mein aapko dikhega and then you approve it move forward so if you are tracking sales order to say wo aa jayega if you want a master to be made wo information aapko dikh jayegi ki ye iska hai ye iska item master bana hai ya party master bana hai and accordingly aap usko approve kar denge so that whole program is supported not just by technology also by technology operators so aapka kaam nahi rukna chahiye and you have this information available because it is on the cloud it is 24/7 you can access the mis and reporting every time and if you want the data entry to be happening 24/7 we run a bpo operation which is 24/7 so for us to enable that 24/7 uska bhi koi problem nahi hai तो अगर आपको लोड फैक्टर ऐसा है दैट कैन ऑल्सो बी डिफाइंड सो टुडे यू नीड टू रिफ्लेक्ट मेरे बिजनेस में क्या चैलेंज है दिस सॉल्ट वर्क्स इसका ऑपरेटिंग ये वीडियो चलेगा क्या मीट सना शी रन एन ऑटो बार्स मैन्युफैक्चरिंग कंपनी Poor planning and inconsistent quality and inventory control resulted in payment delays reducing her profits and she kept losing customers by using saltworks sana could automate her business operations gain efficiencies and take control of her business from any location enabling her to spend more time in the market with her customers to grow her business Saltworks is a SaaS based business operations management application and once deployed in your business it will help you to track the operations of every department anytime anywhere Saltworks intelligence and technical design tracks more than 180 KPIs and gives you complete visibility of operations resulting in higher operational efficiency increased customer satisfaction and higher profitability Saltworks gives you the power to track your customer order management cycle right up to receivables. By enabling multi-stage production planning and execution, Saltworks gives you real-time visibility of WIP stage as well. All the while tracking stage-wise quality control for different projects. Saltworks gives complete view of your inventory status to procure required raw materials in time every time, ensuring efficient procurement process including vendor risk assessment. Saltworks by Boxpotties. Subscribe now and power your business with Saltworks intelligence. So, our operations, internal logistics can be tracked through that. It plugs into tally. So, financial can happen there. So, you can do account receivable and account payable through this feed into tally. Your all the other accounting can happen. When we were starting, तो हमसे पूछा गया कि यार इसमें तो आप ये भी डाल दो बाकी भी एक्सपेंसेस डाल दो लेबर कॉस्ट का क्या एलोकेशन होगा वो भी डाल दो तो हमने सोचा फिर हमने बोला कि अगर हम वो सब करने लगे तो हमारा प्राइमरी ऑब्जेक्टिव जो है वो डिफीट हो जाएगा प्राइमरी ऑब्जेक्टिव है आपको अपना रियल टाइम विजिबिलिटी देना बिजनेस का कि मेरा अगर ऑर्डर है तो कहाँ है किस स्टेज पर अटका हुआ है डिले हो रहा है तो क्यों हो रहा है अगर उसको क्रेडिट लिमिट मेरा कस्टमर की क्लॉस हो गई है शुड आई स्टिल अप्रूव और नॉट अप्रूव टेक न्यू ऑर्डर और नॉट नो मेरा सेल्स का बंदा क्या मैं उसको वहीं से ऑर्डर डालने को और स्टॉक चेक करने को अनेबल कर सकता हूं क्या कि उसको मेरे से फोन करके पूछने की जरूरत है तू देख लेना यार एक ऑर्डर कर दे नाउ दीज आर सिंपल थिंग्स सो वी सेड लेट्स फोकस ऑन ऑपरेशन ऑटोमेशन बाकी
ബാക്കി ഫൈനാൻഷ്യൽ അതർ ദൻ എ ആർ എ പി ദാറ്റ് കെൻ ബി ട്രാക്ക് ടു ടാലി ആൻഡ് ഉസ്കെ ഓർ ബി കാരണം ബിക്കോസ് ഹമാരാ ജോ അക്കൗണ്ടിങ് കാ തരീക്കാ ഹൈ വോ ഹമാരാ ചാർട്ടർ അക്കൗണ്ടൻ ഡിസൈഡ് കർതാ ഹൈ ഫൈനലി തോ ഉസ്കെ വേരിയബിൾ ഹോനാ ചീയേ കുച്ച് ഇഫ് ദേ ഹവ് ടു മേക്ക് എനി ചേഞ്ചസ് ഇൻ എൻട്രി വിച്ച് ഹാപ്പൻസ് ദാറ്റ്സ് എ റിയാലിറ്റി 99% ഓഫ് ടാലി യൂസേഴ്സ് ഡു ദാറ്റ് ഇൻ ദിസ് your workflow you can't make any changes it has a rigidity because it is a workflow you it will track all your steps you want to cancel the transaction it can cancel but it will track so aapka jo aaj subah ke session mein first half mein banking ki baat ho rahi thi now bank bolta hai ki yaar wip stock value aapne galat di hai yahan ekdam clear dikhega usko this is my wip stock aap sara check kar lo audit karwa lo मैं आपको एक्सेस भी दे देता हूँ एक आप अपने घर में बैठ के सो वो विजिबिलिटी का एक्सेस दे देंगे वो अपने पूरा चेक कर सकता है आपका ऑडिटर सी है उसको ऑडिट करना है योर डॉक्यूमेंट्स विल बी देयर यू गिव हिम यू सेट डोंट कम टू मी आई ओपन इट फॉर यू सो ही विल कम एंड चेक ऑल दी ही कैन रिमोटली चेक ऑल दी ट्रांजेक्शन जो भी उसको देखना है अगर ऑर्डर है तो ऑर्डर के हिसाब से इन्वॉइसिंग हुई कि नहीं हुई कलेक्शन आया क्या आया ऑल दो डिटेल्स कैन बी चेक नाउ दीज आर सपोर्ट सिस्टम विच विल हेल्प यू show the maturity to the authorities here and when you are pitching for a business with an international client and when you demonstrate that you have automated everything and that visibility can be given to their order through an api ya kisi ki tarah aap apna dekho aapka mere yahan jo kaam chalega main real time aapko bata dunga ki uski inventory kya hai uska kya hai wo bhi hum aapko api karke de denge you think the point system will get you more points you think a percentage share of unka business aapko zyada milna chahiye and that's the reality any any queries which you have is say iske related ya uh, anything else related to automation of processes yes please just want to know if you also serve to service sectors or is this only for manufacturing it is designed for manufacturing and trading with the gst now the service sector if it is traceable depending on we can do partial uh, some type some level of service sector we do we can configure it in the system so why is there support for this sorry is there support sir uh, we don't do sap because this will replace sap you don't need in case you already have sap with a, a principal or in your organization then you don't need salt works नहीं आपको किस पर्पस के लिए चाहिए उस पर डिपेंड करेगा so this is the solution for that salt works so as you told that we have a breach for tally and your uh, salt works so yes. similarly do you have a breach as a technical breach for sap or any other ERP that can be configured as See, well as yeah our system if the receiving system is ready to accept the data which we send and also transfer some uh, uh, signals to us or some data to us it is doable apart from that you will support yeah any switching bridging right for example we recently we are in the process of rolling out for a e-commerce company in dubai it's an indian company and we are, they have about eight offices in india and we run their complete operation on this platform except the e-commerce part of it but back end order management and dispatch and delivery now in dubai they have seven partners for warehousing so we are now integrating their only inventory visibility rest of the transaction they the inventory unki jo hogi real time mein wo or at a frequency it will keep updating on salt works so they have a view of all the seven uh, uh, warehouses ki what is their inventory aur usme do level pe hoga ek to hai inventory available for sales and ek hai inventory which is available plus which is blocked uh, by previous orders so total लाइबिलिटी मेरे पास अभी क्या है मेरे वेयर हाउस में वो भी मुझे पता रहेगा अभी इन्वॉइस नहीं करा है बट आई ब्लॉक्ड इट विच इज अ रिक्वायरमेंट टुडे विच इज अ मेजर कंफ्यूजन इन दिस ऑल्टो ऑल्सो द मोमेंट यू अप्रूव एन ऑर्डर एंड प्रोसेस फॉर क्रिएटिंग अ डिलीवरी नोट इट ब्लॉक्स दैट इन्वेंट्री एंड एंड नेक्स्ट ऑर्डर विल ओनली गेट दी बैलेंस इन्वेंट्री अवेलेबल तो आपको कन्फ्यूजन नहीं होगा कि आपने एक ही इन्वेंट्री के ऊपर दो ऑर्डर उठा लिए सो दो आर द इंटेलिजेंस विच एज बी बिल्ट इन दिस सिस्टम
So, aapka integration is absolutely possible with any system. The receiving system will decide that. What about the contingency? Uh, Suppose so, there is some breakdown in the system. So, is the recovery of data is possible? So, we have a, uh, uh, we are on the cloud, uh, like AWS, and uh, first level is uh, that itself defines a strong infrastructure. Second is, there is a parallel mirror uh, which works simultaneously. So, if one uh, uh, server crashes, it will immediately switch to the next server. Within minutes, it can, it will happen that. So, your data loss is not there at all. It, you are working practically real time. And some failures, even Google happens. After Twitter, we get uh, so, I, in I, I, IT, uh, even how much ever I push, any vendor in today's date, 99% will say 99.9. But 99.9% ka matlab hai by what? It is for the day, or for the week, or for the month, or for the year. What is the lead time for restoring the breakdown again? Well, this is operating for quite some time now. We've not had any breakdown. We do have uh, 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 outages for publishing fresh uh, changes. So, uh, for example, here we are using 10 people. You have suggested that this feature is required for me. Now, I will evaluate that I will apply this feature for 10 people. So, I will make a feature for the product. So, the rest of the 10 people will also be added. So, our problem is that technology and needs change. You don't have to think about it. You are also thinking about it. And the rest of your uh, uh, ecosystem is also thinking about it. So, continuous upgrades are still in this. What about the protective aspect with uh, respect to hacking and all that? So this is completely safe. The database is what people hack. So database server can be accessed only by the application server. Because today morning itself, we had the news there was a bug in the Quickel antivirus, hmm. which was somewhere crashing the Excel files of our system. Hmm. So immediately we disconnected our internet connection hmm. and that way we uh, disabled the antivirus also. See, uh, so, hmm. can we approach like that or then thereafter we kill, uh, people are saying ke we will be coming up with a solution to it, say within a four hours time hmm. to again the restore the uh, protective part of their... So, okay, sir, I would like to interrupt. 20 minutes are over and we still have five more speakers to go and we are running out of time. Okay. May I please ask, sir, to kindly uh, coordinate with him personally so he can have all his answers. I think it's an uh, important question. Just last, okay. uh, okay. respond to it and then we'll... So, data security and stability of the environment is absolutely essential. If uh, Amazon or Tata, uh, if they are uh, able to maintain the data center and their uh, time, we will have no problems. Because they will be managing our servers, they will be running our servers. So, uh, our, we are an application pro, uh, uh, developer and an operator on their environment. So, our security in the architecture of the application, we secure that we can touch any database direct internet. So, your problem is, it's completely isolated. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. We are uh, there. My colleague Priyanka uh, uh, is uh, sitting there. Koi bhi aapko information chahiye, you can reach out. Otherwise, aap uh, uh, LinkedIn pe ya uh, uh, internet pe salt works uh, dekhenge ya works patties dekhenge. We still are reachable. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Rajiv Gupta. Next, please help me welcome Mr. Kaushik Chandra, who is a business coach, uh, and the name of his organization is At Connect Redefining Businesses, and his topic is uh, pretty interesting: nine steps to systemize your business and avoid busyness. So, please help me welcome Mr. Kaushik Chandra. Good afternoon, everybody. I am audible now. I think Mr. Rajiv has done a wonderful job, you know, just waking up all of you after a strong lunch. So, uh, Rajiv ji, I'm really grateful to bring. Huh? I was not joking. No, it's practically sure. And I love the word, the word, the word called salt. You know, the only thing which actually defines your favorite thing that is the food. If you have more salt, you don't like the food. If you have no salt, then also you don't like the food. 
So salt is actually you. You have to be present there in somebody's life, in your business, where you are inevitable. And that's why you need a very processed business tool. Understand? So today my subject is nine steps to systemize your business and not your business. Now, what is the difference between business and business? One is B-U-S-I-N-E-S-S, -S, and the other is B-U-S-Y. NESS. If you are very busy, you are not in the business. And because all of you are here, that means you are in business, B U S I N E S S. Because you have got the time to think, to reinvent yourself, and do something better. Am I right? Yeah. So I think all of you have heard the word that what brought you here will not get you there. Do you know whose dialogue is this? What brought you here will not get you there. This is a very famous dialogue by Marshall Goldsmith. So I would request you gentlemen, you have all come down here to sit in the same place. Why don't you exchange your seats one by one? Just exchange with your neighbor. Get up, yeah, get up and exchange your seat. That will prove some, you know, movement in your body structures, right? Yeah. Yeah, what brought you here will not get you there. So to get you there, you need to change your place a little bit. You have to change your thought a little bit. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. So let me continue on that. So I come from a background with a 32 years of experiences in different organizations, starting my career with JL Morrison, coming back to Panasonic, then to from there to PCS, the Putney people, Epson as a project head, for India and Sri Lanka and then working with KEA and I chose business coaching as my career and hence I got myself certified by action coach by Mr. Brad Sugar. So action coach was built up by Mr. Brad Sugar in 1993 in Australia and later on the organization shifted to, can I come down and speak? It is better because I'm standing on edge. Yeah. So. As an action coach, just to give you a brief, is that I've got 1,000 officers across the world with more than 4,000 business coaches across the entire world community working together. Now, I'm a part of that in India, working with several other business coaches, and we are present in India and UAE as a single community, where we coach different business organizations to understand what they are in, and also to make them understand where they can go. So understanding the why is very important that why I am in this business and why I am not in that business. So that is the brief thing what uh, uh, thing and uh, our main motto is to find out the world abundance through business re-education. We use the word business re-education because we are not here to teach you business because you are mastering that. We are not here to teach you business. We are here to actually revise the business ethics, the policies, the processes. Because when we do business, we forget that we have come to the business. We, we do something which is maybe not necessary at that point of time, but we do it because we think it is urgent to do that. So there is a vast difference between an important thing to do and an urgent thing to do. Today the topic is not there, we just go forward on this. As for our technology, we call it a successful business is a commercially profitable enterprise which can run without you. Now this is a big problem because a lot of people have said, how can you say boss, it's my money, it's my premises, it's my business, it's my thought, how can you say that this business should run without me? The only point here was to say that don't try to get into the micromanagement of your business because you are the owner of the business. Live it on somebody whom you can trust. If you cannot trust, then build up somebody whom you can trust. Because if you cannot trust, that means you cannot delegate. And if you cannot delegate, that means you cannot bring that business up. Full stop. Period. That's how it is. So, today, I will talk about only nine steps, though we have got 20 steps, we talk about only nine steps out here. The first step is vision statement. How many you have you got a vision statement at your office? 
Then they put up your hands that I have got the vision statement in my factory or in my office. Again, I see only one hand, two hand, three hand, four, five, six, seven. Vision statement is nothing but a long term goal which is going to happen in the next 5 to 10 years. Definitely if you have got a vision statement then obviously you also have got a mission statement. I think, hey, you look at office ka board mein likha hua, this is my vision and this is my mission. Correct? So the next one is mission statement. These two statements are very important which will develop the third word which is known as the culture statement. People join your organization because of your culture. People leave your organization because of the leadership in your organization. People will join your organization because of your culture and people will leave your organization because of the leadership in your organization. You know. Creating the smart goals. Now, what are smart goals? Specific, measurable, achievable, realistic target. I repeat the word smart as specific, measurable, achievable, realistic target, and that is the goal. As I say, pandemic is bad. Okay, man, I saw crore to kallunga. Pandemic ka pehle 25 crore mein the. He was at 25 crores. After pandemic, he thought that no, I have to do 100 crores because I have to minimize the loss, what I have made in the last two years. Is it possible? It's not possible. So let's not put up a goal which is actually not possible and which creates a lot of stress inside the body, inside your own system. Organization chart, get it on the board, written out in the blood that this is what the hierarchy system in the organization. However small it is, it has to be under the chart. Why we need so many things? We are only three people, four people organization. But actually, every big organization, what we see were small in this one only. I have seen an organization growing from 226 crores to 1800 crores from 2006 to 2016. We started up from a 100 square foot office in Chennai and then we had a company. This company is named as Epson India Private Limited. Okay. I was a part of the 10 member team of the organization to build it up and I saw however small you are, the more better process you should have. Jab bada ho jata hai, the process aur koji samal hai. Jab chota rata hai, the process aapi ko create karna padega, aapi ko samalna padta hai. So, People who are joining you have to have a positional contract. How many of you give appointment letters to your people? Correct? So many people give the appointment letter to your people. How many of you get those people sign the KPI of your organization? What they're supposed to do? When you give appointment letter, you actually <coughs> promise them that you will give the salary, correct? But to get the salary, what they do? Do you get it written by them? That's what the KPI is all about. Get it signed. I am bound to give you a salary, but you are bound to give it back to me. Boss, come on, write it down. Then you have to decide. That's what it is called KPI. KPI is sometimes known as Key Performance Index. It is sometimes known as KRA. Whatever, whichever language you want to use that. But everybody, even the owner, to the office by down should have a KPI. Measured on which your yearly contracts revised whatever has to be done has to be done the less the human touch i think the better is the system all in along in my life of 32 years of working i only had numbers my number started from 0 1 1 2 it became 6 1 2 3 then it becomes 0 3 8 8 and lastly when i left the organization my number was 1 1 3 that is the employee code ghar chhod ke baki kahi pe koi employee code tha but that actually made me more better. There was no personal touch. At 0388 ka birthday hai, celebrate karo. That's how it is. People normally call me by KC because they forgot the full name also. Somebody wrote my name as K-O-U-S-H-I-K. Somebody wrote my name as K-A-U-S-H-I-K. Somebody does. People from South used to call me at K-O-U-S-I-K. The Japanese used to call me ki K-H-A-S-I-K, Khasik. So all different people. So it was always better to have a 0388. There is no mistake in that. 
ultimately if all these things are together then it gives you a complete robust management system this is the book written by mr brad sugar instant systems if you can buy it from amazon it is very very informative try to get this book it is very helpful it will tell you everything in crisp i will not cover this these are the few subjects which we actually do when we coach our individual clients we go start from the mastery of the different products to the niche to the leverage to the system to the sales team to the hiring of people to get the synergy upon the different departments and then finally get the results so that the entrepreneur actually can get into another business after setting up this because being an entrepreneur he cannot be at one business he should not be at one business that has to be delegated to the best person in the organization after that comes the five steps which we forget we think that we are into manufacturing business because all of you are into manufacturing business lekin sir ek cheez batao business is equal to sales sales is equal to collection and collection is equal to business jitna bada bhi factory ho utna zyada sale aapko karna padega bina sale mein business hota nahi hai i know a lot of people are very much allergic about doing about sales but ultimately that is the only process to make your factory work correct so sales i think contributes to 80% of the your food correct so lead generation are you looking into it conversion the lead how much you are doing it which are the processes number of transactions per conversation Co conversion what is the average rupee value of that transactions if all these things are calculated then you will find that by increasing only 10% value of each of your effort can give you 60% there is a big formula about it which we actually work with the different entrepreneurs in this market so i like this word i think everybody will like it sales is vanity profit is sanity but end of the day cash is the reality right sales is vanity profit is sanity and of course cash is the reality there is nothing like that balance sheet aur kuch bolta hai mera pocket aur kuch bolta hai to thoke hoga nahi to balance sheet must be equal to your pockets so the different ways of invasion what we do at at connect along with action coach is we do one on one coaching we are in the group coaching there are a lot of entrepreneurs who come together of the same trade they come together to speak to us we do mentoring we do disk analysis one of the most important thing that is the psychometric test test done for the entrepreneurs for the people inside whether that particular person is fit for that particular post or not to get the right person in the right state in the right bus will only help you to go to the place where you want to go okay so we do leadership trainings sales iq analysis of the people and motivators dix 360 so these are all assessments 247 segment there is organization in las vegas which is actually was formed in 1935 by dr martin and from there it is going on so this is the process which we do in you know entire business portfolios this is my team mr arun bhattacharya who is a senior vp was in patni computers and then he was in sri india mr rahul madhiwala is also a you know a businessman so he is also in our team this is nitisha rao and of course iris this is sitting in here say hello to everybody yeah so so we actually the team entire what they do they hand hold each and every client whatever we work with because when i do my coaching with them we give them homeworks and my team's duty to see that that they actually perform those things so that the next meeting is fruitful otherwise hamara life mein postmortem karna bahut easy lagta hai and we love doing postmortems okay that's fine thank you you can find us in all these numbers 9769636194159126165 so these are the series of numbers what we have got email id is there and with that i close my presentation anybody wants to ask anything I think I was super fast. 
लास्ट टाइम देवर चेजिंग मी यू नो खत्म करो खत्म करो खत्म करो इस टाइम आई आल्सो आई थिंक यू वेरी एक्सप्लिसिटली एक्सप्लेनड एवरीथिंग दैट्स द रीजन देयर आर नो क्वेश्चंस रियली ओके let there can be two things either you are spell bound or you are not even bound also <laughs> very true <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you very much i mean let's continue with that thank you thank, thank you, thank you so much mr kaushik chandra and now let's go ahead with our next section where we'll be talking about emerging biz- business and export opportunities and to, and begin, to begin with be- please help me welcome mr michael brown deputy council general australian council at mumbai and he shall be highlighting on bilateral trade and business cooperation between india and australia that's right thank you i talk loudly as well so uh at the outset good afternoon everyone uh and i'd like to thank the sme chamber of india and its founder and president mr salunke um and thank you to the sponsors dignitaries and most importantly all of you um it's a great honor to be here today in nasik uh with the business and manufacturing and exporting communities um australia has deep links with nasik believe it or not um our wine and agricultural sectors have those deep links and it's my hope today that we can build on those It's my first visit to Nasik um and I felt a very warm welcome. I arrived yesterday and went straight to to Shores to eat some of the famous mistle pub uh, and it didn't disappoint. It was delicious. Um in India's 75 years of independence, it is the fifth largest global economy and the importance of engaging with India on an international business has become clear. Australia appreciates the significance of the strides India is making. both as a national strategic partner and as a friend of many decades in fact india was one of the first countries in asia that australia opened formal diplomatic relations with in 1944 that's 3 years before india's independence today this relationship grows increasingly stronger as strong democracies with diverse societies our common values provide our association with a solid foundation Increasingly so today we share common interests in the present preservation of a free and open Indo-Pacific region. This has amalgamated into an unprecedented convergence of our strategic interests as quad partners and beyond. Our bilateral comprehensive strategic partnership cements India as a critical partner for Australia. This translates into practical cooperation in areas of rising importance in critical minerals in science technology education climate change and low emissions technologies as well as in defense and security hopefully that covers off on a lot of what people do here today and our leaders on both sides have been working consistently to bring the two countries ever closer commercially and culturally our prime ministers engage frequently Within a month of the formation of our new government in Australia earlier this year, our Deputy Prime Minister visited India to bolster security and defence cooperation. Australia is one of only 3 countries to have annual leaders meetings with India. Our foreign and external affairs ministers have met an incredible 6 times this year and it's counting. and ministers across economic portfolios are following suit. I know Mr Goyal is a big fan of Australia. In fact, just this week Australia's assistant minister for foreign affairs, Mr Tim Watts, um was at the Bangalore Tech Summit. Bangalore will still be soon become home to Australia's fifth consulate in India. And our new consulate general will promote Australia's reach into India's digital economy and innovation system from cyberspace to outer space. I hope over these past few months you have noticed news publications with the uh, announcing the significant developments in our bilateral strategic economic and cultural relationship much of this to, is to do with two great initiatives that further our economic relationship first the australian government's update to its india economic strategy that's our road map to deepening ties in the economic space and second the conclusion of our economic cooperation and trade agreement or ecta um which in hindi is unity my hindi is terrible though so sorry 
Um, it gives me great pride to note here that Australia is the first large developed economy with whom India has concluded an FTA, although an interim one, in the last 10 years. This was a natural course of action given the mutual benefits to our economic growth and resilience. We share economic complementarity, by which I mean our economies can be strengthened through collaboration and mutual value addition. In Nashik, we've sent valuable rootstock and wine technology to help build an industry. It's no surprise then that we have such a strong relationship with India broadly. The two-way trade between India and Australia in 2021 crossed USD 27 billion. Top export items from India to Australia include refined petroleum, passenger vehicles and parts, and telecom equipment. Meanwhile, coal, gold, and other raw materials constitute the top items imports, imported from Australia. But this is really just the start. ECTA, our interim FTA agreement, is ambitious, and it will set in motion a new era of trade between our two countries. Once the agreement becomes law in both Australia and India, more than 96% of Indian goods exported to Australia will enter duty-free. Conversely, 85% of Australian goods exported to India will enter duty-free. It will be cheaper to buy and sell goods from Australia and India. The agreement unlocks growth potential for Indian manufacturers and exporters of automobiles, textiles, footwear and leather products, gems and jewellery, toys, plastic products and so much more. You'll see tariff reductions in all of those sectors. When it comes to Australian imports, there will be substantial reductions in the cost of importing Australian coal, wool and important manufacturing inputs. I'm confident that increased trade will improve not only the choice available to consumers and businesses such as yourselves, but it will also add value to our supply chains. But beyond trade in goods, I'm sure there is interest today in understanding the important impact of the seeker on the services sector. ECTA will not only support Australian and Indian services companies and professionals exporting and operating in each other's markets, but by providing much needed mobility, predictability and certainty. So that's an increase in visa numbers. Under the most favoured nation treatment accorded to Australia, India will extend, extend any future services market access improvements it grants to future FTA partners in areas such as higher and adult education, business services, insurance, banking, hospitals, audiovisual and tourism and travel services. Australia will accord reciprocal, reciprocal treatment to India. On the taxation front, Australia will stop the taxation of offshore income from Indian firms providing technical services to Australia under the double taxation agreement. The negotiation on mutual recognition of licenses and qualifications between our professional bodies will be facilitated, delivering greater certainty for Australian skilled professionals entering the Indian labour market. Australia too has acknowledged the important contribution made by science, technology, engineering and mathematics specialists, including information and communications technology professionals. To enhance mobility in these fields, Australia has extended possible stays from two to three years for Indian students graduating in these fields. These decisions, once, these decisions, once concluded and in force, will only strengthen Australia's vibrant Indian diaspora. Over a million people claim Indian ancestry in the latest Australian census. Indian Australians are now our country's fastest growing diaspora. And people born in India are the second largest overseas group in, in, in Australia. This continuous migration has been supported by friendship between our two countries at the government to government level. Concluding the ECTA was a significant achievement and hopefully will assist all of our businesses. Our government is now seeking to complete the parliamentary and legal processes to have these agreements in force as quickly as possible. Complementary to the ECTA, Australia will implement measures to strengthen li linkages with India. This includes a new centre for Australia-India relations to increase India literacy in Australia and help build business cooperation. The Australia-India Maitri Friendship Scholarships 
will support some of the best and brightest in Indian students to study in Australia. The Maitri Grants will build links between our future leaders and foster great collaboration between our cultural and creative industries. And we'll also have an Indian business engagement package to help accelerate commercial engagement between Australia and India. A range of other programs will deepen partnerships with India across science, technology, critical minerals, space and climate change. To work across these sectors, leaders across the whole range of governments on both sides are working increasingly together. And our next step is to build on the ECTA by concluding an ambitious, comprehensive economic cooperation agreement. That's a full FTA, including areas not covered er earlier, like digital trade. The Australian government remains committed to our relationship with India. We will pursue new ways, economic, cultural, technological, personal and community driven, to work even more closely. Through the Australian Consulate's work, in partnership with chambers such as the SME Chamber of India and the SME Export Promotion Council, I hope to accelerate business and interpersonal ties between our two countries. We rely strongly on your support and experience in achieving this. I've enjoyed learning about some of the challenges faced by SMEs in Nashik today um, and for hearing your views on how we can work together. I thank you very much for the opportunity to speak today and welcome any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Michael. And you absolutely correctly pronounced Nashik. So we got really happy when you said Nashik. Oh, really? I thought I would get some friends by saying I enjoyed missile puff, <laughs> which I do. And in fact, I would really like to appreciate your patience because there, there have been speakers who have been speaking in uh, the local language. And I'm sure you must be wondering what is going on. But then really hats off to your patience as well. No, no, no. I've enjoyed today. Great. Thank you so much. We are so glad you enjoyed. Any questions, please? I'll share some information on the ECTA with the Chamber and they can pass it on to members. Uh, as we negotiate the full SECA, the full FTA, I would only encourage you to continue to work through the Chamber to talk to the Indian Government about what you want to see in FTAs. I think it's really important that businesses such as yours talk to your government so they know what to ask us for when they're, when they're making requests of foreign governments. So I think it's really important for us to conduct this outreach uh, and to hear what businesses want and need out of you know, liberalisation of trade. So thank you. Thank you so much. Next, I would like to invite uh, CMA Pradnya Chandorkar. She is a practicing cost accountant, committee member of National Advisory Board of Women Entrepreneurs Development Council, and she shall be talking about enterprise product cost management. So please help me welcome CMA Pradnya Chandorkar. Namaskar, Mandali. Post lunch session. Because he has taken a lot of efforts to arrange this program at Nasik and making our Nasik a footprint on the international map. So I'm very much thankful to Sakshi Madam and Chandrakant Salunke sir for making this event a very big success. I would like to extend my special thanks to Kong, uh, who is a Consul General of uh, Republic, uh, People's Republic of China. I'm also thankful to Michael Brown, Deputy Consul General of Australia. I am giving this thanks on behalf of WRC of Institute of Cost Accountants of India. I would like to give thanks to our WRC Chairman Shriram Mahakaliwar sir as well as Vinayak Kulkarni who came along from Mumbai Nagpur for this event. Before me there were two three speakers. And I am really thankful to the organizers that arranging my session after their speeches. Because they have done my job very simple because you know that they have covered most of the operational areas. Then connecting the people, business coaches as well as automation. 
So my job is very simple. I will be just guiding that how you can manage your product cost. Product cost management is very essential in every business and success or failure is the end result of it. Do you agree all of you? Whether it is a small, medium, MNC or any other business, is it the same case? Yes or no? Yes. You can take the simple example of Panwala. Mike Brown sir, do you know what is Pan? Yes. Have you tested it in? I have. Yeah, that's great. He has tested wine also, pan also. <laughs> I think he likes Indian food. Misal also. also. That is also another hub. Nasik is a misal hub nowadays. It's a new identity of Nasik, misal hub. So, just for the example, I will take the pan tapri or pan wala, pan shop. So, can anyone tell what are the flavors in pan? Just one by one quickly because we are we have very short time. Just tell the name of pan. Banarasi pan, I will start. You can yes. Okay. What else? That's it. These are the old pan tapri flavors that you are telling me. I am asking you the chocolate pan. Exactly. What else? Mint pan. Yeah. Have you seen the menu card of any pan wala, pan tapri pan shop? Yeah. It's a big menu card like our restaurant menu card. Even bigger than that. Can you tell the price range? I will start with rupees 15, minimum price of any pan. 15.69. Can anyone tell what is the highest heard of? or seen on the menu card? 300? That's it? Only 300 pan you have tested, means you have not tested the pan. 10,000? What is the name of that pan? Name of that pan? I have heard pan of 5000, name of that pan is couple pan, right? So there are number of varieties. In earlier days, there were two, three, four, five single digit flavors in pan. Now in pan, pan shop, there are hundreds of varieties. There are price ranges maybe from 15 rupees to 5000, 10,000. Now just imagine how it, the business was simple when it was just 5 to 10 flavors and product price range may be 10, 15, 20, 100 max. Now the price range is so huge, flavors are number, just imagine the how complex business is. Getting me? The business processes, the business is very complicated. He cannot just charge same price for all flavors. He cannot charge same costing system, he cannot apply the same costing system as this is for simple pan tapri. The, the business or the processes or price estimation was very simple. But now due to variety and complexities of business, the entire process is different because you know that pan is a perishable item. He has to keep that stock. His stock keeping units, SKUs have increased. So then his supply chain will be, he need to adopt or get the, uh, his adaptability or readiness for the supply chain management as well as costing. So product cost management is getting difficult day by day. If any entrepreneur do not follow any pricing or costing system accurately, then we, we know that they have to wind up their businesses. In India, we, have, we are experiencing even before pandemic and mostly after the pandemic that winding up of various businesses. This may be because of wrong business decision. Do you agree with me? This is because of wrong business decision. It's not that the SBI is not supporting you or life coaches or business coaches are not there or consultants are not there. But the decisions are not taken at right time, at right place and predictions are not correct. 
that is the main reason for business failures on this background our institute of cost accountants of india has adopted the punch line that for every successful business decision there is always cma so today's discussion we will be doing entire discussion will be focused on how the business can take a conscious decisions and how cost sheets help you to make the business decisions today we will be discussing on abc customer analysis how many of you are aware that what is abc customer analysis i think most of you if anyone doesn't know okay i will explain then product life cycle cost multiple products modeling target cost management or should costing we call it as and implementation of automated system for target cost management and assessing the performance you know that cost analysis is done by most of the cost accountants or businessmen the purpose are different they do the cost analysis for different purposes one is financial reporting that is reporting to mca for cost audit or maintenance of cost records second is generally done by all businessmen that is for predicting the cost behaviors that is whether it is a marginal cost or fixed cost or um, variable cost similarly various types of cost are there then assigning cost to cost object what is your cost object cost object may be your product cost object may be your services so that is the purpose of cost and last but not least that is making business decisions now while classifying the cost i will not explain you the uh, typical uh, bookish knowledge that is that is material this is labor this is overheads everybody knows that so i will not use that what is important in understanding the costing is what is relevant cost and what is irrelevant cost so why products and pr production are not profitable at the end the challenge of successful cost management process lies in connecting the different teams you know that in any organization there are different teams i can name those teams everybody knows that production team finance team accounts team as well as uh, engineering team sales and marketing team then there are three situations that often uh, the cost is missed uh, misunderstood that is different implement, uh, implementation of costing method if you appoint any consultant say cost accountant as a consultant or any chartered accountant as a consultant they will guide you but the costing methodology suitable to your business may not match to your business that is the first reason why cost accountants or any consultant is not uh, giving you the accurate result secondly perception of costs are very different the thing which we call as a historical cost generally for costing post mortems are done means after incurring the cost we do the analysis that where we went wrong and what was the reason for overrunning of cost and thirdly due to poor collection of data and its conversion into meaningful facts <coughs> coming to the main up, our agenda of today's discussion that is enterprise product cost management it incorporates all key areas of business from development to production purchasing procurement and sales product cost management also involves successful costing from product development throughout the life cycle requires company wide approach many times we do costing by just adding various types of cost which is not correct you have to understand the entire business or 360 degree view is required not 360 but at least 180 degree view you have to consider in the business while understanding the cost thirdly your cost should be transparent and trackable means many times costs are incurred they are hidden not on the forefront or they may not reflect in your cost sheet or nevertheless they are reflected in your financial results in my 25 years of experience i have seen that many companies 
always depend on their financial statement that is profit and loss account small and medium business mainly depend on their financial service industries i have prepared their cost sheets given them a very good profitability analysis of every product every services in that one common point i have seen that marathi da pan mhanto na gola beris result eto gola beris samasta sagan manje kay ke tumche kahi products he profitable astat kahi products he 100% loss making astat pan totality madhe jeva tumhi pnl bagta teva tumhala 10% profit disto you are happy 10% profit zala 20% profit zala you are happy with that you keep on running the business pan tumhala he kalat nahi ki jo paryant aple loss making products apan completely stop karat nahi band karat nahi to paryant profit making businesses kiwa te products tumhala profit denaras nahi ओवरऑल रिझल्ट कधीच बघून उपयोग नाही आपण पॅथॉलॉजी लॅब मध्ये जातो असं होत का की एकच ब्लड चिट टेस्ट रिपोर्ट केला आपल्याला जर काही प्रॉब्लेम असेल तर आपण किती टाईपच्या टेस्ट करतो पूर्ण पॅथॉलॉजिकल अनालिसिस करतो आणि जेव्हा तो पॅथॉलॉजिकल अनालिसिस रिपोर्ट येतो ऍट दॅट टाइम वी कॅन पिन पॉईंट की एक्झॅक्टली काय प्रॉब्लेम आहे हेल्थ मध्ये सिमिलरली जेव्हा आपण कॉस्ट शीट बघतो प्रोडक्ट प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी बघतो तेव्हा या गोष्टी इम्पॉर्टंट आहेत अकाउंट्स अनालिसिसचा अप्रोच टुवर्ड्स कॉस्टिंग इज डिफरंट अँड इंजिनिअरिंग अप्रोच इज डिफरंट मेनी टाइम्स इट इज अ पोस्टमार्टम पण कॉस्ट मॅनेजमेंट ही मिनिंगफुल जेव्हा होईल जेव्हा तुम्ही इट इज डन प्रायर टू युअर मॅन्युफॅक्चरिंग प्रायर टू मॅन्युफॅक्चरिंग म्हणजे काय डिझायनिंग स्टेज कन्सेप्शुअल कन्सेप्शुअलायझेशन स्टेज इंट्रोडक्टरी स्टेज तुमच्याकडे किती लोक आर एन डी पासन कॉस्टिंग करतात किंवा आर एन डी पासन कॉस्ट मॅनेजमेंट वरती फोकस केलेला असतो ग्रेट ऍटलीस्ट वन ऑर टू पीपल आर देअर नाहीतर ह्या गोष्टीकडे अजिबात लक्ष दिलं जात नाही आणि अजूनही मी सांगते तुम्हाला माझ्याकडे कॉस्ट ऑडिटला कमीत कमी हंड्रेड सी आर हा आमचा कॉस्ट ऑडिटसाठी क्रायटेरिया आहे आणि थर्टी फाय सी आर ज्यांचा टर्न ओव्हर आहे त्या पर्टिक्युलर इंडस्ट्रीज एम सी एने कॉस्ट रेकॉर्डच्या परव्ह्यूमध्ये घेतलेल्या आहेत पण तरी तुम्हाला अजूनही सांगते की हंड्रेड करोर फायव्ह हंड्रेड करोर थाउजंड करोर्स ऑफ कंपनीज क्लायंट्स आहेत माझे पण त्यांच्याकडे अजूनही कॉस्टिंग हे थम रूलवर केलं जातं कॉस्ट ऑडिट हे फक्त एक स्टॅच्युटरी कम्प्लायन्स म्हणून बघितलं जातं पण कॉस्टिंग करताना इंटरनल कॉस्टिंग करताना डिसिजन मेकिंगसाठी थम रूलवर केलं जातं विच इज व्हेरी हॉरिबल सिच्युएशन इन मेनी ऑफ द कंपनी आता कॉस्टिंग करताना आपल्याला प्रॉडक्ट कॉस्ट मॅनेजमेंट करायचे असेल तर वी हॅव टू डू ए बी सी कस्टमर अनालिसिस दिस इज अ टिपिकल व्हेल शेप your cumulative profits is given by most of the customers cumulative sales follow usually 20 80 rules 20% of the customer provides 80% of the sales do you agree with me a veil curve for cumulative profitability is typically reveals mo- most profitable 20% of the customer generate between 150% to 300% of the total profits all manufacturers do you agree me do you agree or not the middle 70% of the customer are break even and the least profitable 10% of the customer loses 50% to 200% this is not my percentage this is by survey now if we take the life cycle cost life cycle costing is relatively new perspective and that argues the organization should, should consider a product's cost over its entire lifetime when deciding whether to introduce a new product can anyone tell me that uh, what is the point you feel while into in you know, a manufacturing or into any business that we have to introduce a new product can anyone share quickly kadhi asa tumhala vatla ki ata yes this is a time to shift and uh, we have to switch to new product येस प्लीज कधी वाटलं असं फक्त तो पॉइंट सांगा एका नाही कोणीतरी शेअर केला तरी चालेल ऍज अ रिप्रेझेंटेटिव्ह प्रॉफिट कमी झाल्यानंतर अजून कोणी 
ट्रेंड बदल कस्टमर रिक्वायरमेंट चेंज मोस्ट सेंसिटिव आंसर इन दिस करंट एरा कॉम्पिटिशन आली आता एक तुम्हाला सांगते मी की पॅन्डेमिक नंतर आणि कस्टमर चॉईसेस इतक्या चेंज झाल्या की तो जो ट्रेंड आहे तो आपण या स्लाईड नंतर ते डिस्कस करू लेट मी फर्स्ट कम्प्लीट दिस सेव्हिंग इन द प्रोजेक्ट फेजेसमध्ये आपल्याला असं वाटतं की आपण सेव्हिंग कुठे करू शकतो आता कॉस्टिंग म्हटलं की लोकांना काय वाटतं की कॉस्ट अकाउंटंट येणार तो सगळ्या प्रोसेसेस बघणार सगळा स्टडी करणार ही विल कम अप विथ द सजेशन दिस इज अ नॉर्मल प्रॅक्टिस की कम अप विथ द सजेशन तुम्ही इकडे इकडे हे मटेरियल्स मॅनेजमेंट करा हे स्टॉक किपिंग युनिट्स तुमचे बंद करा किंवा तुमच्या मटेरियल फ्लोमध्ये काहीतरी चेंज करा अँड सो सो ब्ला 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 सो मेनी थिंग्स सजेशन दे विल गिव्ह बट डू यू नो हाऊ मच सेव्हिंग ॲक्च्युअली हॅपन इन द मॅन्युफॅक्चरिंग प्रोसेसेस मॅन्युफॅक्चरिंग प्रोसेस म्हणजे एक डेव्हलपमेंट फेज एक मॅन्युफॅक्चरिंग फेज आणि एक आफ्टर सेल्स ही फेज ह्या तीन मध्ये तुम्ही मॅन्युफॅक्चरिंग कॉस्ट मध्ये करून करून किती सेव्हिंग करू शकता फक्त झिरो टू वन टू टेन पर्सेंट पण तुम्ही सगळ्यात जास्त सेव्हिंग कुठे करू शकता इन युअर डेव्हलपमेंट फेज आता मला एक सांगा की एखादा आपल्याला एखाद्या गाडीच चांगलं ऍव्हरेज हवं असेल किंवा आपण ऍव्हरेज जज करतो कशावर न करतो इथून मुंबईला जायचं ऍव्हरेज आपण बघतो की किती मिळालं गाडीच तर कशावर ते डिपेंड असतं इट इज मेनली डिपेंडंट ऑन से ट्रॅफिक सेकंडली रोड कंडिशन अँड ओव्हर अँड अबाव दॅट ड्रायव्हर स्किल ओके मॅम आय एम रिअली सॉरी टू इंटरप्ट बट ट्वेंटी मिनिट्स आर अप अँड वी स्टील हॅव टू मोर स्पीकर्स आय वुड रिक्वेस्ट यू टू काइंडली कम टू द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टंट पॉइंट ऑल दिस ॲव्हरेज ऑर ड्रायव्हर्स ड्रायव्हर स्किल्स वी कन्सिडर फॉर डिसायडिंग फॅक्टर फॉर किलोमीटर ऑर ॲव्हरेज ऑफ अ व्हेकल पण तुम्ही टेक्नॉलॉजीत जर बदलली बरोबर डिझेल व्हेकल इलेक्ट्रिक व्हेकल किंवा अजून कुठली तरी टेक्नॉलॉजी मे कम इन फ्युचर ॲज सोलारवरती व्हेकल्स चालतील तर तुमचं पूर्ण रेफरन्स पॉईंटच चेंज होऊन जाईल गेटिंग मी सो दॅट इज व्हेरी इम्पॉर्टंट ॲट डिझाईन स्टेज then again for development stage then there is a growth stage and abandonment i will just quickly take two minutes madam or yes sagrad important me fakt thoda point touch karte ani then i will stop ki aplala नवीन एखादं बिझनेस मार्केटमध्ये प्रॉडक्ट आणायचं हे कधी समजलं पाहिजे तर ॲबंडन फेज झाल्यानंतर नाही किंवा कस्टमर चॉईसेस बदलल्यानंतर नाही तर वेन यू आर ॲट अ मॅच्युरिटी ऑर मे बी डेव्हलपमेंट स्टेज त्याच वेळेला तुम्हाला नवीन प्रॉडक्ट मार्केटमध्ये इंट्रोड्यूस करणं खूप गरजेचं आहे आणि त्याच्यासाठी जे वॉट एव्हर द प्रॉडक्ट प्लॅनिंग ऑर कॉस्टिंग इज रिक्वायर्ड दॅट इज व्हेरी व्हेरी इम्पॉर्टंट टू टेक युअर बिझनेस अहेड so there are few more slides uh, i will request organizer to share with all of you if you are interested in and uh, if, as uh, sir has told salon ke sir has told that for any support in nasik we all cost accountants are at your service we are into service industry and if you need any help from my side as a professional help or any other help you can note down my number it's 99 I have not mentioned in the my PPT, but you can note down. It's 9922-867455. I will repeat 9922-867455. And thank you so much for patience listening. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pradhna ma'am. Next, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Ajit Shah, who is the Director of Universal Connections. And he shall be talking about emerging business opportunities for export promotion. If you have made a commitment, then you should be a stone of your stone. One said that one buyer told me in 22 years, and in 23 years, his phone came. I said, look at the calendar, look at the calendar. It's 22 years, I don't have a phone, it is an insult to me. This is the level of the thing. अभी स्टूडेंट तो स्टूडेंट्स होते 
उनको तो जो लेक्चरर की टांग खींचने में मजा आती है वो हमारे लेक्चर में नहीं आती तो एक एक लड़का था उसने हाथ ऊपर किया सर सर आप बोलते हो कि अब अब तक आपकी कोई भी डिलीवरी फेल नहीं कभी तो हुएगा आप जरा सोचो वो बेचारा ना बोल रहा है नहीं 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 ऐसा नहीं और डिलीवरी मेरा बराबर जा रहा है मैं माल परफेक्ट टाइम पे पहुंचता हूं नहीं नहीं सर सोचो ना कभी तो ऐसा हुआ होगा मोहम्मद भाई बोले हाँ हुआ था एक दफा एक दफा हुआ था सब बच्चे लोग खुश हो गए कि हमने यू नो स्पीकर को गिरा दिया बोला एक दफा हुआ था वो दिन सुबह साढ़े चार बजे मेरी माँ का देहांत हुआ था हमें तो कोई पता ही नहीं था ये हमने कभी सोचा ही नहीं था ऐसी टर्न आ जाएगी बोला वो दिन सुबह साढ़े चार बजे मेरी माँ का देहांत हुआ था मैं वो दिन ऑफिस नहीं खोल पाया वो दिन की मैं डिलीवरी नहीं कर पाया सब लोग सीरियस हो गए टर्न आ गया पूरा पता नहीं और बाद में वो मोहम्मद भाई दो मिनट के बाद में वो लड़के के सामने ऐसा हाथ कर कर मगर बच्चा तू देखना ये मत सोचना कि मेरे बायर को माल टाइम पे नहीं मिला बोला तीन दिन के बाद मैं खुद माल बैग में लेके फ्लाइट पकड़ के उसको डिलीवर कर गया हमारे सबके अंदर एक मोहब्बत भाई है हमें जगाना है हमें उसके ऊपर फोकस करना है दोस्तों इतना बड़ा मार्केट है इतना बड़ा मार्केट आज की डेट में इंडिया की इमेज बहुत अच्छी है आज पूरा पॉजिटिव वाइब्रेशन है ग्लोबल मार्केट में हमें एक ही करना है दो चीज आप ध्यान में रखिए डिटर्मिनेशन डोंट टॉय विथ एन आइडिया के एक्सपोर्ट करना है एक्सपोर्ट पार्ट टाइम नहीं होता है किसी ने मुझे बोला था कि सब एक्सपोर्ट करने का राइट टाइम कौन सा ऐसे ट्वेंटी ईयर्स बिफोर फर्स्ट टाइम एंड नेक्स्ट इज टूडे वेल तो ओनली थिंग आई से खाई होगी अगर ठोकर हमने किसी पत्थरों से खाई होगी अगर ठोकर हमने किसी पत्थरों से मंजिल का निशा भी हम पाएंगे उसी पत्थर से थैंक यू आई कॉन्ग्रेचुलेट एस एम ई चेंबर ऑफ कॉमर्स महाराष्ट्र इंडस्ट्रियल डेवलपमेंट एसोसिएशन and our home institute western region of institute of cost accountants of india for arranging such a nice summit here in nasik and the topic assigned to me is recent changes in gst friends as you all know gst was introduced with intention to simplify the tax regime in india which will be certain which will simplify the life of businessman i don't know how much realistic expectation that was but certainly according to my personal experience the journey of 5 years was not so simple and we have witnessed more than 1000 changes if i am not wrong in the gst law and still still the count is going on so during next 13 minutes we are going to see some important changes which were proposed during the financial budget of 2022 and which are made effective from 1st october 2022 just one month back friends during previous tax regime we have seen that many changes like changes in the custom duty or changes in the central tax uh, central excise rates immediately after the budget session they they were having midnight effect because such changes were introduced by way of finance bill but that is not the case in case of gst because in case of gst even if changes are passed by the central government in the parliament it requires ratification from the state governments and that is why 
it takes time to take effect so notification number 18 oblique 2022 which makes the budgetary amendment effective with effect from 1st October 2022. So one of the important change is in the condition for availing the input tax credit. I hope you all people must be knowing the input tax credit concept. So input tax credit is the credit of tax which you have already paid on your purchases so originally in GST law under section 16 subsection 2 four conditions were there if you if you know first condition is that there must be invoice second condition goods or services must be received by the recipient third condition tax must be paid by the supplier to the government and fourth condition you have filed your monthly return but during 39th meeting of GST council there was one agenda wherein it is said that input tax credit taken by taken by all the registered person all India level is 20% more than what they have paid to the government so say all the suppliers they have paid 100 rupees all India level to the government and on the other on the other hand people are claiming 120 rupees as a credit how is it possible so you all must be knowing fake invoices cases etc etc so then it was decided to cap that credit and initially 20 percent of the uploaded credit limit was introduced by the government with effect from 9th October 2019 then that ceiling was reduced to 10%, 5% and now new condition was introduced during the budget of 2021 where credit is restricted only if it is uploaded on the GST portal. Right? Now fourth, fifth, con uh, fifth condition is, uh, sixth condition is introduced which says that IT should, ITC should not have been restricted under section 38. Right? So earlier condition was that ki if it is uploaded on GST portal then only you will get the ITC. Now one more condition they have inserted which says that such credit should not be restricted in GSTR 2B. Now which type of credit is restricted that we will see after some time. But this is one more additional condition which is incorporated by the government during this budget. So this is one of the important uh, you can say uh, not the positive change for the business community then there is change in subsection 4 section 16 subsection 4 which restrict your credit earlier that restriction was till September so if you are talking about any particular financial year say financial year 21 22 then section 16 subsection 4 was saying that you are eligible to take the credit till filing return for the month of September of next year or filing of annual return whichever is earlier. So for the month of September, 20th October is the last date. So you, 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 are, you were eligible to take the credit till 20th October of next financial year for particular financial year. Now, that date they have changed to 30th September sorry, to 30th November. So though effectively you can you can you can see that key from 20th November date is extended till 30th November, but it is not so because we are filing GSTR GSTR 1 on 11th or 13th, and we are filing GSTR 3B on 20th, right? We are not filing any return in between 21st November to 30th November. So that additional period of 10 days is not relevant we can say. So effectively government has extended this time period by one more month. And when we are you know comparing Indian taxation with the global taxation and 
many times we have seen that india has borrowed the uh, you know tax uh, gst structure from the canada it is dual structure right but if you see the corresponding section in canadian law then canadian people canadian government is allowing four years time to take the credit so four years from the date of invoice right and here we are providing only barely one and a half year right next is cancellation or suspension of registration so in case of composition levy if return is not filed for a financial year beyond three months from the due date government can cancel your registration right in other case in case of other taxpayer if returns that is form gstr 3b is not filed for the consecutive period of six months then they can cancel your registration now again this is very important amendment for the msme in terms of credit note also uh, earlier you were allowed to report credit note in respect of financial year till the 30th september of next financial year now in line with the itc they have extended that period till 30th november of the next financial year similarly there is similar change in section 37 also section 37 is about form gstr1 okay furnishing of details of outward supply so in gstr1 also for particular financial year say for financial year 2021-22 you are allowed to make the changes till filing return for the month of september but now they have changed that to 30th november of next financial year section 38 this is something new because we have witnessed the litigation on gstr 2a and gstr 2b earlier uh, it was said that gstr 2b is not notified so there is no legal validity to gstr 2b but now government has incorporated gstr 2b by way of substitution of section 38 section 38 earlier was uh, re regarding gstr 2 okay but since they have done away with the gstr2 now they have incorporated gstr2b by way of section 38 by substituting section 38 so section 38 is about gstr2b which provides the details of you know credit available to the uh, recipient during the period so part a of gstr2b will show you the details of inward supplies for which itc may be available and part b will show you the details of supplies in, res in respect of which credit would not be available to you currently gstr2b is providing only the information regarding credit which is available to you okay maybe in coming days maybe in a month or two you will find there will be one separate annexure which will show you the details of credit which is not available to all of you right now what are the reasons why credit is not available that is defined so reason number one if you are purchasing from a person who has recently taken the registration then government is having that power that they can restrict their credit for some period say six months then second is if any registered person who have defaulted in making any payment then that will be communicated to you, you by way of annexer b of form gstr 2b if any registered person who gstr 1 liability is more than what he has paid in gstr 3b then form gstr 2b will notify you that this credit is not available to you because your supplier has not paid balance liability to the government next is if you have availed credit more than gstr 2b then government will notify you that you have exceeded ex you have availed credit excess as compared to gstr 2b so that is also restricted and 
next who has defaulted in discharging the tax liability if any ta if any registered person who has sold any goods to you if he has not paid that liability to the government then government will notify you that this registered person who have supplied goods to you but ha he has not paid that amount, that liability to the government so that credit will be also not available to you so this is the list this is the list which is the restricted credit and you are required to reverse that credit from your gstr 3b of the next month Section 41 was regarding provisional uh, availment of ITC. Okay, now they have substituted this whole section. Okay, and now crux of the, the crux of this section is that whatever is the available credit to you in your form GSTR 2B. Okay, that much credit you can avail in GSTR 3B, and if tax is not paid by any supplier in respect of any supply then you are you required to reverse that credit in subsequent month along with the interest then there is important amendment section 42 43 43a now this section was regarding matching of credit this was there in previous regime but since gstr 1 uh, gstr 2 and gstr 3 is now not applicable government has omitted all these sections now let us see some important changes in in, in 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 rules earlier it was sections this we have already seen documentary requirement and condition for availing input tax credit rule 36 so now rule 36 makes it mandatory for the recipient that credit is available to the recipient only when it is appearing in your form gstr 2b now this is very interesting reversal of input tax credit in case of non-payment of consideration. Now if you are not making payment to the supplier within a period of 180 days, right? In that case you require to reverse the credit, right? But in earlier section it was stated that if you have made the partial payment say uh, payable amount is 1 lakh rupees and if you have made the 80,000 as a payment to your supplier then earlier law was stating that you are required to reverse proportionate credit that is credit which is restricted up to 20,000 rupees now surprisingly after this amendment <coughs> even if you have made the partial payment still you are you required to reverse whole credit right and this is very you know uh, this is going to hamper msme a lot because say bill amount is 1 lakh rupees and 18000 gst is paid and if you have made only 80000 rupees payment and 20000 is balance so after 180 days you require to reverse whole 18000 rupees right so this is again uh, against the spirit of gst law and maybe in near future government will change this particular rule now rule 42, 43, uh, then rule 60, 60, then rule 69, 70, 71, 73, all these rules are regarding filing of GSTR 2 and GSTR 3, right? So since government has withdrawn this GSTR 2 and 3 forms, there is no need of this, all these rules, right? And that is why government has uh, withdrawn those, uh, those rules. Now we are at, con at the end of our, my session, my presentation and uh, just one and a half minute is left. So I want to highlight one more important aspect which is recently clarified by the government. Whether GST liability is payable in case of liquidatory damages right you all must be knowing this concept liquidatory damages now this is coming from the contract act section 73 and section 74 of the contract act right so in case of non performance of any contract right in case of non performance of contract say you are not completing your contract within the stipulated time period in that case 
contract uh, a person who is offering the contract can recover liquidatory damages from you right so and that is something which was very uh, clarification on this particular matter was very important and CBIC wide circular number 178 oblique 10 2022 has clarified the matter the matter is basically regarding agreeing to the obligation to refrain from act or to tolerate an act or situation or to do an act now this is very technical concept i am not going into that but it it has three limbs you are agreeing to the obligation to refrain from act you are agreeing to obligation to tolerate an act or you are agreeing to do uh, you are agreeing to uh, uh, you are agreeing to the obligation to do an act right so in that case you are supposed to pay gst and department or rather so many consultants they were considering liquidatory damages concept under this clause right so now clarification is given by the government agreeing to the obligation to refrain from act right Ag or agreeing to the obligation to the tolerate an act or situation or agreeing to the obligation to do an act all these three activities must be under the agreement or under the contract right liquidatory damages is something which is that clause is made in order to complete that contract within the stipulated time period right and no one is paying liquidatory damages for non performance of contract so this is not voluntary right and when i am paying liquidatory damages to any you know uh, to to a person who is offering contract in that case it is not voluntary and there is no agreement between me and that contract that person who is offering that contract that i will pay voluntarily liquidatory damages to you and in turn i am not getting any supply of goods or services from that person and that is why it is just the mere flow of money from one person to another person right and that is why it will not be treated as the supply of service and gst would not be applicable in that case that is was that is what clarified by the government wide this circular now apart from liquidatory damages government has also clarified that check dishonor uh, check fine penalty or penalty imposed by for violation of any law for example if you are uh, violating traffic rules so we are not intentionally you know violating traffic rules to pay penalty to the government and when you are paying penalty to the rto in turn rto is not providing any service to you and that is why there is no service component there is no supply component be member of uh, smi chamber of india and maharashtra industry development association and take the advantage of of these kind of the events thank you very much and i uh, conclude this event thank you